What's going on, everybody? Crazy Dog, back with another Cleveland Cavaliers trade rumor video for you guys. And it looks like we can add a new name to the list of Cavaliers trade targets. As you can see by the tweet on your screen, and I quote, report, Cavs among teams expressing strong interest in Josh Hart. Not just interest, strong interest. Now, for those wondering, what would Josh Hart bring to the table? I mean, not really much, to be honest. I mean, let's take a look at this dude's stats. So far this season, 49 games. He's averaging about 9 points, 8 total rebounds, 4 assists. So not horrible. Definitely not the worst of the some of these trade targets I've seen. I mean, Ken Reddish is probably uh, on this guy's level when it comes to production right now. The others are way above him, honestly. Uh, about 51% from the field, 31% from three. Not what we need. As you know, we need shooters. This guy is not a shooter. No, no. Not anywhere close. He's like the exact opposite of what we need. We need guys who can defend well, especially against wing def wing players like small forwards which Josh Hart can play the small forward but this dude cannot shoot for crap 81% from 3 yeah exactly what we need right no 73% from the free throw line and an EFG percentage of 55.3 his per is 12.8 and he's averaging about 4 win shares this year got about 3.8 win share about 4 I hate it if we got Josh Hart. Just like Cam Reddish, it would depend on what we gave up. Most likely, we really wouldn't have to give up much to get him. Probably like Dylan Windler, maybe like Rolo or something. Bench depth, maybe a second rounder or two. But yeah, I wouldn't put Josh Hart high on my, uh, my list. You already know who I really want. Malik Beasley, Josh Richardson... Or Gary Trent Jr. Get me any one of those three guys and I am lit. I'm set. If we get Cam Reddish, I wouldn't hate it. Low risk, high reward. If we get Josh Hart, uh, I don't know about that. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Keeping this video nice and short for you guys. Because there's really not much to say about this. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, we're getting closer to the trade deadline. A lot of rumors are starting to come out. We'll see if the Cavs make any moves. Which I think they will. But who knows what Colby Altman is doing right now. He's probably sitting in his freaking office playing video games or maybe talking on the phone. You know, maybe he's watching my videos. I don't know. You never know. Right? <laughs> Imagine if my team's GM watched my videos. <laughs> That'd be awesome. But hi, Kobe, if you're watching. <laughs> oh, man. Don't take any of my slander seriously. You know, it's like a spur of the moment thing. You know. Because I'll tell you one thing, once you make a big move, Cavs fans will love you. Okay? I mean, after all, you're like the longest tenured GM we've had in a while. Kobe Altman was the first GM to receive an extension. I'm pretty sure. Since, uh, since, uh, we had a new owner. Yeah. Since Gordon Gund gave up ownership to Dan Gilbert. And it's the one thing about Dan that I didn't really like about him. He never extended GMs. He tried to lowball David Griffin. And other than that, I mean, Griffey was probably the best GM we've had. And now we got Kobe, who is as good as, if not better, than Griffin was. I mean, of course, David Griffin nearly got us Paul George and Jimmy Butler. And the only thing that stopped us from getting Jimmy Butler was Kyrie Irving essentially saying, I'm out of here. And then, of course, the only thing that stopped us from getting PG was the Pacers backing out last second. Think about how lit this team could have been. We could have had Paul George or Jimmy Butler, you know, maybe both, with LeBron and Kyrie. We wouldn't have had Kevin Love, because he would have been going to Denver. But my God, bro. Freaking Indiana and Kyrie Irving ruined what we could have had. Gotta hate it, you know? Ugh. But um, let me know what you guys think of uh, this news that the Cavs are strongly interested and Josh Hart. Would you want him or no? Let me know in the chat or comments.
I guess my, you know, if I go live, he can let me know. <laughs> I'm sure you guys will. But uh, yeah, that's gonna wrap it up. I'm Crazy Dog, and um, I'll be back when uh, there's more news that comes out. We'll see what Kobe's got in store for us. What's Kobe cooking? Hmm. I don't know. Is he even in the kitchen right now? I don't even know what he's doing. You know, nobody. Knows. The only one that knows is him. But uh, it's about time we see Finesse King Kobe again. I need to see it. I need to see it bad. Go get me a good small forward, Kobe. For the culture. Okay? Okay. I don't know about Josh Hart. It depends. If we get Josh Hart, Kobe better have something else cooking. Because if our deadline literally consists of just Josh Hart, yeah, buddy, we're going to have some issues. Because we didn't really change anything. You know? If we end up with, like, Josh Hart and Malik Beasley, or Josh Hart and Gary Trent, or how about this one? Josh Hart and Josh Richardson? Two Joshes? That'd be that'd be nice. But if it's just Josh Hart, or just Cam Reddish, uh, yeah, I don't know how I'd feel about that. That's all I gotta say. I'll see you guys tomorrow for Cavs Pacers. Maybe a move will be happening by then. Who knows? But uh, still got a long, a long time before the deadline. But it looks like I'm gonna have to make another slide for uh, trade targets. I'm gonna have. To, I'm, I'm on my second slide right now. I got my original six, and now Josh Hart. And I know there's gonna be more names popping up soon. So we'll see who else uh, comes up in rumors. But that's gonna wrap it up. I'm Crazy Dog. Let's go Cavs. I'll see you tomorrow, unless we make a trade. Then I'll see you then. But until then. See you tomorrow. Go Cavs. I'm out.